What's up guys and gals and welcome to the first episode of Pillars of Eternity. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we hang out a little bit in Obsidian's newest playground. Hopefully, sort of reinvigorating some old memories of the Baldur's Gate slash Icewind Dale days. Those were among my favorite games as a kid. And so when I saw Pillars of Eternity was going into development, I had to play it. I knew it was going to be going up on the channel. I was a little bit apprehensive about it, if for the only reason that... The game is going to represent a considerable challenge for me. This is going to be a big game, a lot of episodes, and it's going to take a long time to finish up, especially at like one episode a day. And so I sat and I thought about it for a while, but after playing the game for a couple hours in my own free time, I found that I was having a blast. It was reminding me of my childhood. I was having a really, really good time playing it. The nostalgia was very, very real, and I was like, I, was, I won't forgive myself. I was like, I won't forgive myself if I don't put this up on the channel. I'm going to miss this opportunity, and I think I'm going to regret it. And so in that case, I figured I would go ahead and I would start filming a series on it. So without further ado, there's a lot of stuff to get done. So for right now, what I'd highly recommend is that we just get rolling. So let's take this ball and kick it down the hill, shall we? We get to choose a difficulty from easy all the way up to Path of the Damned. They do get very, very difficult. I'm going to stick with normal for right now because I am a fan of games like these. I've played everything from Baldur's Gate to Fallout all the way on up to Neverwinter Nights 2. I haven't got a chance to actually play Divinity Original Sin just yet, but that's pretty much the only CRPG I haven't hit just yet. You can also add extra modifiers such as Expert Mode, which turns off all the tips, and then it makes it so that you can't use the key to hold down to find all the lootables and stuff like that. I don't really care about it. I like holding down the key. It saves me time, and it makes sure I don't miss the Things and then people don't shout at me in the comments. Trial of Iron is just Iron Man mode, so if you're a fan of that sort of thing, you can definitely do that. But, let's go! Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Well, it seems like this adventure's off to a good start. Our leader's plowing a tree, and the rest of us are bound, so that's good. That's unfortunate, but let's keep continuing. I'm just joking. He said we were bound for the veil. It, it's a joke about being in shackles. Never mind. Let's keep going. So now we should have access to the character creation. I'm going to make a male character this time around. I'm going to make a male character this time around because I just love the delivery of postage. And so on this side, we'll probably go through all of the different options just very, very quickly. We've got humans. We've got Amawa, which are like water people. Sort of like water giants, I guess. They're pretty cool. They seem to be awesome in one way or another. We've got dwarves, which are pretty standard fantasy fair right there. We've got elves, once again, standard fantasy fair. Every single one of these races comes with its own bonuses to various stats. And we've got the Orlan, who are sort of like halflings, I guess. Everybody in this world has, like, pointed ears. I don't know what's up with that, but it's just, I guess, part of the setting, I suppose. And then we have godlike, which are actually a little bit, like, difficult to describe. But ultimately... I suppose they're like a group of people that have been blessed by the gods or something like that. I'm not really too sure. I'm not going to be going for a perfect playthrough, meaning that I'm not going to make a character race, class, and all those like sort of decisions based on what's going to give us the optimal outcome. I won't be min-maxing through this playthrough. I will be playing to win, but ultimately I'm going to make decisions that are going to drive some people crazy if they're min-maxers. I am not one of those people. I just like playing for fun, and so there it is. I'll probably be super boring and just go for human. In all honesty, I, I always play humans in games like this. You get Resolve and Might. Resolve is a really, really good stat to have as it controls all of your saving throws. And so it's not a bonus wasted. And then the Might will help out as well because I think I've got a mind to play a melee character. So there it is. Well, I know I have a mind, but whether or not it's actually attuned to playing a melee character, I don't know just yet. We have to choose where our character comes from. Meadow folk, ocean folk, savanna folk. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't affect anything hardly at all except the way that you start out looking. And even then, you're going to get to override that in this tab over here. 
over here at the end. So we'll just go with Meadow Folk for right now since we're going to override that on the top anyways. The class selections. The Barbarian is a melee specialist. Low armor, lots of AoE, lots of berserking, things of that nature. Very, very low clothing modifier. Tends to be half nude a lot of the time, making everybody else awkward. Must sleep in the nude. That's a thing that it says in his character sheet. He has to sleep naked with no blankets on, otherwise he gets a debuff for the next day. It'll make the rest of your party feel awkward. What can you do about it? A Cypher is sort of like a blade dancing psychic. It's the only way that I know how to describe it. A fighter is pretty standard fare for D&D, as is the paladin. It's your holy warrior, although this can be attuned to be a black guard. We'll talk about that in a little bit. His ability is essentially that he gains an attunement based on his god, and the actions that he takes in the world strengthens or weakens his attunement with that god or something like that. It describes it over here called faith and conviction, and so they get bonuses to their defenses, and the value of the bonus shifts based on the actions that you take over the course of the game, and whether it falls into alignment with the god that you've chosen to be your patron. Ranger. Ranger is going to be standard fare as well, but comes with an animal companion, so if you like pet classes, this is probably be where you want to start. Bows, dual-wielding swords, leather armor, all that fun stuff. Wizard, a caster. That's pretty much all there is to it. The Chanter is the exact same thing as the Chanter from Aeon, the online MMORPG. Essentially, this character maintains an AoE chant all the time that helps him build up points and gives everybody an AoE buff. Once you build up points, you can trade those in for active attacks, and so that was actually one of my second choices for what I was going to go for. Druids, one of my longtime favorites in D&D type games. Spirit Shift is their ability. They turn into an animal. We have Monk over here, which is an unarmed melee specialist. Not a big fan of the monks. I have a friend who is a huge monk player. Every time we play D&D, he plays a monk. Every single time, it's some variation of a monk that he's already played. But not my not my cup of tea. The Priest. Now we're getting towards my end of the field, the Cleric. I enjoy playing the Cleric. I enjoy playing the Paladin. I enjoy playing the Wizard and the Rogue. Those tend to be the classes that I choose when I play d and I don't like the more specialized stuff. I tend to stick with the classics because I did come up during the AD&D period of development. Back in the old Gygax days. Days. Was Gygax developing that? I hope he was, because now I'm going to feel stupid if he wasn't. Priest is exactly what you would expect. Lots of healing. Rogue. Our rogue character is going to use sneak attacks, and also if there's debuffs on the enemy, you get a fat stack of damage for it. So there it is. Let's go with the priest. How about that? I find that most, like, CRPGs, like Baldur's Gate and whatnot, Icewind Dale and all those, they never give you, like, a good cleric like you never have that cleric you know what I mean the one that spec exactly the way you want so I tend to be the person that grabs on and makes a cleric that I can spec the way that I see fit next we've got to choose a patron god so you've got Barath which is the god of life death doors and all that fun stuff Aothos is your standard fair god of light Magron is your god of war Scan is the god of Oh, yeah, it's the evil god. So, ultimately, this is going to be like your inner rook if you're into, like, EverQuest type stuff. And then Whale is the god of dreams, secrets, mysteries, revelations, and also blowholes. That one's kind of in parentheses, though, at the end. We're going to go with Barath because if you take a look at the bottom of these, they're going to have favored dispositions, which means that it's going to give you... I mean, it gives you some kind of bonus, I would assume, to taking actions aligned with stoic and rationality. I would take Aothus, the god of light, because I prefer to play benevolent good characters. However... It says that honest is one of the favorite dispositions, and I don't, I don't care how good of a person you are. Eventually, you're going to have to tell a lie to protect somebody. And so, honestly, I'd rather keep our options to tell falsehoods open just in case in order to protect a party member or a storyline NPC or whatever, we have to tell a little fib every now and again. Keep a fib on the bib and all that. So there it is. Let's go with Barath. Now then, we have to choose our stats. Anything with a gold star next to it means that it's really important to our class. Anything with a silver star means it's sort of important. Anything without it, you can sort of just like ignore for right now. You can tailor make these any way that you want. Like you can tick them all the way down if you so desire. You can take them and just go, and then you can reallocate the points from five on up however you desire. But for right now, I'm the kind of person that likes to have no negatives in any stat so that I'm not making negative rolls. I just, I don't like to set myself up like that. I would prefer not to do it. And so first things first, we need to go in on Might. Might is going to affect our damage and our healing, and then it's going to give us some more fortitude as well. Fortitude, I believe, is your health. Resist attacks on the physical systems of the character, so there you go. Let's go with, it's probably, I don't know if it gives us a plus to hit, but I'd say take that up to 14 maybe. That seems alright to me. We'll take Dexterity up. Dexterity is going to affect your action speed because the combat in this game is sort of like a modification of the Final Fantasy real-time action boost. Whatever, I don't know what to call it. The action time battle system or whatever. You've got a little bar underneath your character and it fills up. And every time it fills up, they take an auto attack or they do the next attack that you queued up. And then there are interrupt attacks that go off instantly when you attack with them. Either way, it reminded me the second I saw it because of the way the bar fills up and everything, it reminded me of Final Fantasy. And so that's what I'm going to call it from now on. The active time battle system or whatever. It's just a turn-based system with a meat. I'm sorry. It's just 
just a time-based system with a meter to show it off, but I don't know. It reminded me of Final Fantasy, so that's how I'm referring to it. We'll go two in on dexterity for right now. Action speed does appear to be important in this game because attack speeds can vary greatly. I think that for right now, though, we'll leave ourselves some extra points because Intellect is going to be our guy. Intellect is going to affect our ability to cast AoEs. It makes them larger. It increases the duration. So if we have heal over time effects, we got lots of things that last long periods of time. We want that extra duration, and then it gives us a chance to save with our willpower versus magical effects. Resolve is going to do the same thing, but it affects all all of our resist and so it's going to give us concentration the ability to continue casting spells even though somebody is actively shoving their fist in your mouth it's it's a good skill to have if you're going to be the group healer and so i figure we'll go along with that take that up to i don't know if i want that to be that large maybe we can take out a point or two and reallocate elsewhere because i'm willing to bet we'll probably get stuck in melee a lot then again our job is designated healer is it not so we should probably do, let, let's just go like that. That seems pretty good. I'm happy with the spread right now. I'm feeling as though the bounty before us is looking delicious, so let's continue. Now we got to choose our culture. There's the Adir, which is the biggest and most powerful empire right now. They're kind of like tropical and whatnot. You've got the Deadfire Archipelago, which is essentially like a bunch of pirate-ruled islands out in the middle of nowhere. We've got the Ixamedal Plains. The Ixamedal Plains are savannas and things like that. We've got Old Vilea, which if you wanted to imagine it's sort of like the old Florentine or the old Florencia, I guess, I guess you could call it, it's kind of like the old Grecian states or the old Italian states where they have like warring merchant families and things like that that run everything in a nutshell. That's the way that I would describe it anyways, and that's probably the one we'll take because it gives us a free intellect. The Rautai, I don't know, I never get this far, it's a gulf nation it looks like, and so it includes Amawa, Orlan, and Dwarven. Okay, and so it's kind of like a coastal area. We've got the Living Lands, which gives us might. And so it's a mountainous region of large north. I've noticed that our priest is wielding a sword. That's sort of outside the ordinary for RPGs. But I like it. I like it. And so Perception's going to be the last one for the white that wins. God, that would be... You know that you've got to abbreviate that. If you come from that place, you can't be like, where are you from? Oh, the white that wins. I'm like, what the hell is a wind? I've never heard that verb in my life. Wending? Hope I don't get winded today. That seems like it would suck. Please don't wind me. All right, well, we'll probably go with Old Vilea. First and foremost, because I love merchant states and things like that, and so I figure that'll play right into things that I enjoy in video games, and plus, it gives us intellect plus one, which is pretty badass. I don't think anybody else gets... Nobody gets, like, multiple points, right? Because that would be the obvious choice if anybody gets multiple points. Old Vilea sounds good. It gives us a big old two-handed morning star, and I accept that. I love blunt weapons, and so I think I can get behind that. It seems like the sort of thing that I could swing. All right, and so now we got to choose our background. The background is where we came from before we became an adventurer, and it's going to give us little bonuses to various stats that we're going to be using throughout the game in order to get through various struggles. And so Aristocrat gives us a bonus to lore. Colonist gives us a bonus to survival. Drifter gives us a bonus to stealth and survival. Laborer gives us a bonus to athletics and mechanics. Merchant gives us lore and mechanics. Artist gives us lore. Dissident gives us stealth and lore. Hunter gives us stealth and survival. Slave gives us athletics and survival. And mercenary gives us athletics and lore. Now, what do each of these do? Lore makes it so that you can identify objects. You can identify situations, peoples, and random sort of like arcane knowledge that other people wouldn't know. The survival makes your potions and consumables better. Drifter makes it, I'm sorry, stealth makes it so you're better at sneaking around. And mechanics makes it so that you have skill with mechanical objects like lockpicks and things like that. Traps, all that fun stuff. Athletics makes it so that you are traveling, fighting, scrambling up fallen statues. So I guess it's going to handle like your climb rolls and things like that. I'll probably go with merchant because that fits into our heritage and then it also fits into other things pretty well. There's not a lot of customization after this point though. We basically just did, we get to choose like hair and stuff like that. And much beyond that, you can't choose like the build of your character or anything like that, which I was a little bit disappointed by. Let's start out, let's tan this dude out a little bit. Let's tan this guy out a little bit because I spend a lot of time in the sun. And so I prefer to be a little bit sun bronzed because eh, it represents me. And when I play my character, I like him to look like me. The black hair doesn't do it for me. That actually does not look like the color that's represented in the panel right there. And go for something a little bit darker. That seems about right. Facial hair, what do we have going on right now? Well, we've got some rather wispy looking beards. Got some Fu Manchus rocking in right there. That beard looks pretty good. They have anybody with sideburns up in this beezy? For sheezy? No. They got no sideburns. They got a mustache and sideburns, but that's a little bit goofy for me. Let's go for... I'll probably just go for the standard beard then. That seems alright to me. Gotta choose a head type real fast. I don't know which one I like. Probably that one right there, I guess. And then for our hair. 
Let's rock out a little bit with the hair. Let's see what we can get going on. The Mohawk is one of my standard fair choices when I play games like this, but seeing as we're a priest, I figure we should probably be a little bit more conservative about our hairstyle. I do dig the shit out of that hairstyle right there. It's got like a super awesome, I don't even know what to call it. It's got kind of like a horse lord thing going on and I dig it. I like it a lot. I could definitely put a shovel to that idea. We got a couple other braided options right there. We got some normal hair around. Okay. So I think I'm a little bit torn. I'll probably go with the one back there. I like it. I'm feeling it. Yep, that'll do it for me right there. Let's continue, shall we? Oh, we got to choose our colors. Hold on. I think you can change these later on, but this is an old Baldur's Gate option that you had back in the day. I'll probably go with some purple. That seems pretty good. And then secondary, maybe some white. Eh, it doesn't blend in very well. Maybe we'll just stick with the buckskin colors. How's that sound? There we go. Off we ride it. So now we actually, that portrait works out fairly well. We got to find one that works for us, though. Something with a beard, something that's actually like representative of our character. We might end up with a helmet later on, at which point I'd say, hey, let's go for it. That one might actually work right there, just because of the hood. I don't know if we're going to be hooded later on, but it might happen. Oh, we're into the female portraits. Let's go all the way back. Unless our character fancies having a female portrait. What's going on right... That one seems to be like the closest, I guess. It's not like exact. That's one thing that like the Baldur's Gate portrait system, the only thing that I ever disliked about it is sometimes you could end up with a character that didn't quite look like you wanted him to on the portrait. You'd be like, oh, this doesn't represent me. I'm having trouble actualizing. I'm gonna need I need help with my fantasy realm picture pictures. I can't I can't look like this. Alright, well we'll just go with the default then. It's it's a little boring, although I like the hooded guy too. Maybe we'll go with him. Yeah, that'll work. Let's go with him right there. That seems all right. We'll see if we could throw a hood on him a little bit later. If we can't, maybe we'll think about, like, swapping the portrait around. Male voices! No prisoners! Okay. Just in case you're a jailer of the inefficient variety. Nice and slow. Hmm. Follow me. Eh. Pretty average. Onward! Easy now. Hmm? I've got this. After them! Eh, I never liked the feisty Joker Deadpool voice. I don't know why. Sharp eyes and keen ears. Hmm? I guess we'll go with Stoic. It's the only one that I like out of all these. Follow me. Seems to work. I don't know. You gotta put some bass in the voice. Otherwise, you gotta... <clears throat> when you give commands, you gotta have the bass in the trunk. You know what I mean? Okay, that didn't sound right. That makes it sound like you're projecting sound through your ass. Which may be possible. It may be a thing that you do on a regular basis, but that does not command respect. Unless you're in very, very odd company. Anyways, I'm gonna name him... Bagabones Bronson. There we go. Bagabones Bronson. That'll work. And so we're off. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods towards a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. Which case you'll be dead in a day. Is that the same voice actor from Wasteland 2 who played like the first, I don't know, the guy that called in on the radio? I think it is. I think it's the same voice actor. Like the guy that was in charge of all the desert rangers or whatever. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. He's talking in reference to a lanky man named Sparfell who carries an old sun-bleached bow. Sparfell nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. So, where would I find those berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. Is it dangerous out here? Not if you hurry about your business. And not if the weather holds up. There's concern in his tone, but he doesn't elaborate. 
All right, well, what are these huge rocks coming up and out of the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. All right, well, I'll go see about those berries then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. <laughs> Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. Sometimes when I get a tickle of wind, I like to lock the windows just to make the people in the car suffer with me. You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. I'm not gonna keel over. Sure. I got this thing covered. Look at me right now. Look at me. We look like badasses. We are ready to roll. And so obviously there's a couple things that we need to know once we're inside of Pillars of Eternity. So left clicking allows us to move around. I actually rebound all the keys last night so that I wouldn't have to deal with this. We can actually go through like that right there. Okay. And so if you press the up arrow, I mean end game, it's gonna be W for default. But anyways, if you press W, it'll double time the game. If you press the S key, it'll half time the game so it goes back to normal. Just in case you want to play a little bit quicker, explore faster. If you hold down the out key, it'll put you in stealthy mode. There we go. And so it'll pause the game if you press spacebar, just like with every other Baldur's Gate clone. There it is right there. So we can go into stealth mode without. I wouldn't recommend it. We're wearing clinking chainmail right now. Probably not so great for allowing us to sneak around. And then if you hold down the tab key, it's going to show you people you can talk to and lootable objects. And so seeing as I don't want to miss anything, ah, we have mechanics, right? Ah, we picked the lot. Good. 10 XP has been earned with our thievery. Stealing from the group is obviously the best way to put yourself on good footing with them. That's how I would start out. If you're interested in putting your feet anywhere with the group, steal from them first. See where your feet get put. We got a box in the middle right there with 10 coins and a little bit of... What did we actually pick up right there? I'm not sure what I'm looking at. What is this? A potion of minor regeneration. Okay. And that one's going to be a potion of minor endurance. Alright, I don't know why we'd be mining out here, but I guess maybe the game has crafting or something like that. <laughs> There's the joke. <laughs> There's the joke. Anyways. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. Why do you sound so desperate right now, man? If you're gonna be selling stuff, you gotta, you gotta have some oomph. You gotta be like, hey, get over here. You need my stuff. You know you need this right now. That's how you sell. You seen the Wolf of Wall Street? You gotta... You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale if you'd like to take a look. Sure. Let's see what you've got. Do you have anything? So I guess this is where... How much do we... Hey, go away, menu thingy. We start out with 110 gold. And so I suppose this would be where you would want to start off if you were trying to, like, re-equip your character or... I don't know. They seem to start you out with a pretty good set, so I wouldn't worry about it. Let's continue off this way, shall we? We've got stuff to accomplish, and we're like 25 minutes into the first episode and have done nothing. And so that's not really the type of place that I want to be right now. I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. I think if you wanted to talk hydrologically, the stream is always going somewhere. It's both digging down into the earth and the active water particles are moving very, very rapidly from one place to another. It's just 
the riverbed doesn't really go anywhere. And actually it does. If you watch a riverbed evolve over time, by the way, if you're new to the channel, I'm a geologist who studied hydrology for a while. Anyways, riverbeds do move around a lot. Quite a bit, in fact. Hmm. Where do I want to go right now? Let's check by those outcroppings. All right, so I guess we're going to go check a crop real fast. Oh, okay, so we've got ourselves a wolf. Let's see if we can go, or my cousin used to say when he was a little kid, he used to call them wolves. So anyways, let's go fight ourselves a wolf, shall we? Let's get started right here. I'm going to see what abilities our character has. So he has first level priest spells. We have armor of faith, which gives us, it gives us damage reduction to an AoE too. So it's for everybody. The bobs of condemnation. It punishes a target for their sins, decreasing their deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will. Well, I, what happens if they've never sinned before? Does that not help us much blessing? That'll increase the accuracy and damage of allies. We've got Divine Terror Strikes Fear. Okay, so that seems pretty good. We've got Halt. Commands a single enemy to halt, causing them to temporarily cease all movement. We've got Holy Meditation. Clears his or her mind, spreading that clarity to nearby allies. Increasing concentration. Wow, we've got a really good skill set right here. Regardless of the situation, we're looking good. Steals the mind against fear, okay. Restore minor endurance, so that's probably going to be our cure light wounds or whatever. And then we've got withdraw, isolates a single target with a protective sphere, shielding them from harm while their endurance regenerates. Withdraw, also extremely useful when you're in college. Let's see here, we've got the, do barbs of condemnation, forget all that passive stuff. Let's own this fool. Get wrecked! Yeah, there it is. That did not accomplish what I wanted it to. So in combat, the things you need to be aware of. We've got this little bar. That's the active time battle system thing that I was talking about. The inverse active time battle time system. It goes down instead of up, but you get what I mean. When that goes down, you use your next active attack. When it is, when you use an ability, it gets interrupted. I was trying to think right there. My brain sort of like hit a snare, hit a penny on the train track. For right now, the little pips above the head, that's our health. So watch out. Let's get started, shall Oh, Wolf is already dead. Between us setting him on fire right. with the unholy barbs of doom and hitting him with a... What does she have? Oh, she's got a very, very large-looking torch that looks like it was forged by Sauron. And then on the other side... What is she wielding right now? What is that, a boomerang? Hmm? What, the hell, what the hell is in your hand? Oh, it's a battle axe. Okay, hmm. so that'll work. Her what ability is trip. She can knock down enemies oh. twice per encounter. I don't know how frequently I can rock these out right here. Holy Radiance, once per encounter, generates a field around the priest, burning vessels in the vicinity and regenerating a modest amount of endurance for allies. Okay. That sounds good. And it says that it's modified by how well his or her reputation aligns with the preferred behaviors of the faith. Okay. Cool. So I suppose we should probably behave in a way that makes our mm -hmm. god happier to know us, rather than pissing him off. All Ooh, springberries. I sense some springing. Odima said something about you being in business for yourself. Yeah, I used to transport things. Well, we can decide what our history is going to be. We can be in cargo ships, we can run a shop, or we can say that we were a transporter. I think the transporter sounds the most badass. I used to transport things. People wanted to keep secret. Goods, people. Yeah, how is it you happened to come here? Well, we can say a competitor sold us out. We were tricked into transporting something I never would have agreed to. Or we got double-crossed while doing a deal and they made off of everything. Let's go with... Let's go with that one right there. I was tricked into transporting something I never would have agreed to. I'm never going to be in that position again. Hazard of the lifestyle, I suppose. You had to expect it was a possibility, no matter how much you didn't want it to be that way. Kaliska bre or Kalisha breathes in her surroundings. Been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Radrix's offer, it makes a girl think, and I'll give him that. You here to settle like the rest of the lot? I hadn't given it much thought. No harm in that. Might as well see the place first. So you must have some other plan in mind for coming this way. Well, I'm just looking for adventure, really. You should hook up with an expedition. Some of the bigger towns send regular groups out to unexplored places, as long as you don't mind a little danger. Anyways, I'm wasting time here. Odimo will give me an earful, so let's be on our way. All right, well, tell me about yourself. I've got simple needs. I like open skies and far horizons. I find work that lets me live that way. My family wanders too. We started in Direwood, but her Durwood, but my parents ended up in the Living Lands. I've got a brother in Routai and another in Adir. My sister in Gilded Vale. She's the only real home buddy. And why are you here? Kalisha sighs unevenly. Her eyes search the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here some time back and sent me a letter. She seemed worried, but that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out, and that's got me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages. Been doing guide work in Ixamiddle. 
but I'd do anything for her, and, well, she's a much better woman than I, so I'm here and we'll see. Odima, I've worked with before. He doesn't usually drive a route this way, but he's doing it for me. Okay, well, let's get back to camp. You know what? I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfell's getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like when he feels like it. We should check up on him first. Slap him around a little. Stream's just down that way. Come on. Let's get you your water. Alright, and so this seems like a good spot to break off the first episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the first episode of Pillars of Eternity, the newest sure. CRPG by Obsidian Entertainment. I'm a big Obsidian fan, a big Atari fan, a big, you know, Interplay fan, and so when this game came out, I knew I wanted to play it. I knew it was going to be a thing that I wanted to cover here on the channel. So anyways, I hope you're going to enjoy this playthrough. If not, well, keep an eye out for other things coming along. Obviously, Reign of Kings is still running. So anyways, I'll see you all later. Hi, do everybody.